Ladies and gentlemen, let's game to the com video. We're going to be doing a bit of a first. I am going to be recording about Zen, and then Amy's going to be adding some audio at the end of this, where she's going to be talking about HoloLens, which I think is the first time that both of us have added audio separately into the video. Normally we do it with like podcasts and stuff, so this one's going to be a bit of an interesting one. But, um, as I said, I'm going to be starting things out with Zen. Uh, which is some rumours popping up from some shipping manifests. So, it's not a big piece of news, but what it does show is that AMD are actually pushing uh, engineering samples across the Atlantic Oceans, don't you know? And some other little bits and pieces as well. So, first things first, this is popped up on Zuba, and someone on Facebook, actually a personal friend of mine, mentioned this to me, and so I figured I might as well add this in. So, there have been 11 and 12 respectively of an 8 and a 4 core variant of a Zen prototype sample. Now, the per unit price for this is 8,600. However, that's in Indian rupees and there's no point trying to do a direct um, conversion rate into like US dollars, for example, and then saying, well, that's how much Zen is just for those people who might try that. Simply because if you look at the 4 core and the 8 core, the pricing is exactly the same per unit. Well, a couple of you know, a couple of rupees different, and it's obviously not going to be like that with the final product. Now, what we can ascertain, however, from this information, is first of all they're both Zeppelin, which lets us know that that's going to be the code name, uh, regarding regardless of the number of uh, cores in the uh, SKU. We'll get more into that in just a second. And as I said, it's an eight and a four core. So the 4-core has a lower uh, TDP, it's going to be at just 65 watts, which is pretty good, it means it is scaling, and obviously it's also going to be an AM4 derivative, because so far that's the only socket that AMD are going to be supporting the Zen lineup for, at least for consumer grade. Now do remember, these are actually modules, so it's quite interesting because when it comes to the high-end server lineup, you can start actually having up to 32 cores, and that's in the Pauls. So, basically, 32 Zep, uh, sorry, four Zeppelins. I'll say that again. Four Zeppelins would come together in eight-core configuration, and that would make a 32-core Nepal uh, processor, which would, of course, be found in a server. However. And information on that is a little rough, however what we do know is each Zeppelin model, uh, module rather, contains 8 Zen cores and each of those cores has 512 kilobytes of its own level 2 cache, whereas each 4 Zen cores will have 8 megabytes of level 3 cache. So what you're looking at is each Zeppelin cluster will have 16 megabytes total, so once again 16 megabytes divided by 2 because each 4 Zen course has its own 8 megabytes of level 3. Around a week ago I did cover some leaked benchmarks concerning Zen and for those of you who did watch the video you'll remember this and if not you can always check it out I've linked it in the video description or more accurately AIM has linked it in the video description and where what we'd learned with this um, it was Ashley the Singularity unfortunately Ashley the Singularity is a bit of a it's a pretty good benchmark, but it's also only one point of data. But what we had learned is that judging from the single benchmark, a couple of things. One, Zen at the moment is only running at around 3.2 gigahertz, which is not necessarily indicative. In fact, I'd be very surprised if it's even slightly indicative of the final retail silicon. And secondly, in terms of IPC instructions per clock, it's actually much faster than what AMD had initially teased us. They had originally said it was a 40% increase over the current uh, processors like, for example, the Orochi or the FX8350 and stuff like that. However, it's turned out to be much faster. In fact, it's faster than the 4770K per clock. And that, my friends, is really impressive because what this means is it's actually pe roughly lev level pegging with even the Devil's Canyon in a lot of instances. And why that's really impressive is because if you can start 
scaling that across multiple back benchmarks obviously once again we are only dealing with one benchmark which is not necessarily the most um it's not exactly the best data point let's face it one is not exactly the best way to benchmark anything but if you can scale that across multiple different benchmarks if that scaling does exist for a and for b if amd can bump that clock speed up to let's say 3.8 to 4.2 gigahertz let's say 4 gigahertz as a median that would be very impressive and why i like this even better is because as i said it's a 95 watt or a 65 watt um, depending on the uh, core variant and what's really cool about this is because it's built on a 14nm process you're looking at a really really nice um, improvement because to give you an idea currently there's a 16 thread at 6900k which is a Broadwell E however that is built on a very similar process uh, it's 14nm but not exactly LPP and that sucks down if memory serves around 130 watts and that of course is from Intel now I don't want to have an Intel versus AMD war because I honestly think that Zen is going to be better at some tasks um, and Zen is going to be worse in other tasks so there's probably not going to be a best processor there's probably going to be a best overall processor but I imagine in some instances you're going to want to go with Intel and in some instances you're going to want to go with AMD my personal feeling, and this is based upon the very limited benchmarks we've seen and the very limited data we've got, my personal feeling is that I wouldn't be surprised if Zen is an excellent workhorse processor with great gaming tendencies, and it might not necessarily be the best processor for individuals who want a lot of multimedia usage. However, if once again the performance information we have is accurate, it's looking to be very, very impressive. And just as a final thought, we know that AMD are also working on a follow-up. We know much less about Zen Plus. Um, we don't know what AMD are going to be doing. We can assume it's going to have the usual 5 to, let's say, 15% improvement over the original architecture. However, that's just guesswork. And we don't know if, for example, it's going to be a clock speed boost. However, the fact that we are seeing these engineering samples being shipped out in much larger quantities now than let's say a couple of months ago for A and for B we're starting to see um, them shipping them a lot more frequently it's probably a good a good uh, sign that AMD are actually on schedule when it comes to the Zen rollout and we know of course roughly the dates and by early next year hopefully assuming AMD managed to stick to their schedule we should see significant quantities of them in retail but for the first several months, AMD are primarily going to be focused supposedly on the high number of cores, so eight cores, which I imagine is mostly a marketing move for them to try and uh, dislodge Intel a little bit. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, let you listen to Amy now about uh, HoloLens. So take care of yourselves from me and over to her. The Intel Developer Conference brought to us not only the news I discussed earlier of Intel's Project Alloy, which you can find on this channel, I uploaded it just earlier today, it also brought news about HoloLens from the Windows boss Terry Myerson. And he announced a partnership with Intel and discussed a few interesting things they have in store for HoloLens. And basically revealed that they are planning for all Windows 10 PCs to support HoloLens in 2017. And he said, quote, all Windows 10 PCs next year will include a holographic shell. And also added that PCs running Windows 10 will work with a head-mounted display and support all Windows holographic apps. Now naturally this support will come to us by way of a Windows update which will enable PCs to run the holographic shell as well as the associated mixed reality and UWP applications. And according to Microsoft they'll be enabling a new experience of multitasking and mixed reality which will be hoping to blend 2D and 3D apps at the same time while supporting a range of devices. 
Uh, Microsoft said in a blog post, quote, Intel and Microsoft are collaborating on a specification for mixed reality ready PCs and HMDs. Our shared goal is to enable our hardware partners to build a broad range of devices for the mainstream consumer and business markets. We are working with several partners on the spec today and plan to publicly release V1 of the spec of the Windows hardware engineering community, WinHEC, conference in Shenzhen in December. And it seems, judging from what they had to say at the Intel conference, that their push of support for HoloLens on Windows 10 PC seems focused on the productivity at the moment, but it does, of course, pave the way for gaming when, of course, there is an actual consumer version of the headset available at a consumer level price. Of course, the only way to get your hands on HoloLens at the moment is getting the development edition, which costs $3,000. It is, of course, very likely that that will not be the price for the full consumer version. So... Perhaps this points to as well a 2017 release for HoloLens as of course all their Windows 10 PCs will be ready to support the device and of course the applications within it. So a 2017 release date might make sense although of course it wouldn't clash with the Scorpio assuming it comes around the holiday period so perhaps it would be mid 2017 or maybe it won't be 2017 at all but it does kind of make sense that they would update Windows just in time for HoloLens to actually come out but of course we've heard very little outside of the few bits here and there we've not even had a rough indication of a release window or anything but perhaps this is pointing to what Microsoft are hoping to do at least with the release of HoloLens but either way that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time